In this video, we're going to write the equation of a line given two points. So we know two points and we want to find the equation of the line. Write the standard form of the equation of the line through the pair of points 2, 7 and negative 1, 9. Write the equation using only integer coefficients. Well, there's a, a lot going on here and there's some formulas we're going to have to use, but before we dive into all that, let's get a picture of what's going on in our head so we can uh, take a look at it here. We know the line goes through the uh, points 2, 7 and negative 1, 9. So I have a little graph over here. Let's just plot that and see what that looks like. So 2, 7, so over 2, up 7 would be right there. And then negative 1, 9 would be uh, left 1, up 9 be about right there. So there's a line that goes through these two points. As a matter of fact, there's only one line that goes through these two points. And um, we could draw that line. So it's going to look something like that. And it's going to go on forever both directions. Okay, I could put little arrows on the end of it. This is the line that we are trying to find the equation of. Now when you're finding the equation of a line, there's some formulas that should come to your mind, hopefully. Um, there's some characteristics of a line that are common to talk about, which is slope and y-intercept. If we knew these two things about our line, we could write the equation really fast using the formula y equals mx plus b. And I'll put the M and the B in different colors to signify the fact that we would need to put values in there. The M being the slope and the B being the y-intercept. The M is the slope, the B is the y-intercept. We could look at this line, this picture, and we could try to uh, estimate the y-intercept. Here's our y-axis, here's our x-axis. It looks like the y-intercept's a little bit more than 8. So we can't really tell exactly from this graph what the y-intercept is. We're going to have to use some algebraic means to figure it out, but we're expecting it to be a little more than 8. And as far as the slope goes, it's going this direction, so it's going to be negative. We could just look at this and do a, a rise over run and, and see. I'm going to do this in purple. So if we look at this little stair step situation, it looks like we're going down to right 3. So that would make our slope rise over run would be negative 2 over 3. You're not always going to be able to draw a graph. Um, these points are pretty easy to graph, but what if the points were like 58 and 127 or something where it would be difficult to graph? So you want to have another way to find the slope. Hopefully you remember this formula. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So using that formula, we would be able to not have to worry about a graph. So we would just plug in these numbers here. This is, uh, you could use either one of these as your x1, y1, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll use this as x1, y1, and then we'll make this other point x2, y2. So y2 minus y1 would be 9 minus 7. And on the bottom, x2 minus x1 would be negative 1 minus 2, which gives us 2 over negative 3, which is the same as negative 2 thirds. So there's the algebraic way to find the slope without having the graph. But I like being able to look at the graph because then that number means something, negative 2 thirds. We can look at our graph and say, oh yeah, that's exactly what it should be, and that gives us confidence we have the right answer. All right, so now we have the slope, but we don't know the y-intercept, and we're trying to find the equation. There's another formula that's called the point-slope formula. Hopefully you remember. Uh, or point-slope equation, depending on what, how, what your book says. And this equation allows us to find the equation of the line if we know a point on the line and if we know the slope. Well, we do know the slope. We got negative two-thirds, and we do know a point on the line. As a matter of fact, we know two points on the line. We just need to know one to use this formula. So the formula looks like this. The point we know is, um, oops, x, we want an x there. The point we know is labeled x1, y1, 
and the slope is m, okay? So the formula goes like this. Let me use different colors for this as well. We're gonna go y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So where all the, uh, I guess that, oops, I'm gonna do blue there. Where all the, I guess that's a brown color or a, I think we'll call that brown. We need to plug in numbers. Okay, so our x1, y1 is gonna be our point. Now up here I've labeled x1, y1 as 2, 7, but you could use either of these points, it doesn't really matter. And then our m value is our slope. So we're just gonna plug that stuff in. So we bring down the y. Now the y and the x, the blue y and the x are just gonna stay y and x because those, those are gonna be the variables in your equation. So we get y minus y1, which is, I'm gonna use seven. Again, you could use this point and use nine and then you'd use the negative one for the x1. Uh, equals m, which is negative two thirds, times x minus x1, which is two. Okay, we plug all that stuff in, and now we do some algebra and uh, simplifying. We're going to distribute this negative two-thirds in here and see what we have. And then we're going to talk about uh, standard form, because this says it wants the answer in standard form. y minus 7 equals negative two-thirds x. we got a negative times a negative, which is a positive. 2 times 2 is 4, and then uh, the denominator here under the 2 would just be 1, so 3 times 1 is 3. Okay, before we start moving stuff around, let's talk about standard form. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, well, okay, so this right here is slope-intercept form, because it's solve for y, and then you can determine the slope and the y-intercept. Standard form looks like this, ax plus by equals c. And the a, b, and c will be numbers. The a will be the coefficient on the x term, the b will be the coefficient on the y term, and the c will be uh, some constant number. In standard form, let me write that standard form. This is standard form. There's a couple other criteria, and that is that this a value right here needs to be a positive number. So a has to be greater than zero, has to be positive. And these a, b, and c need to be integers. a, b, and c have to be integers, which is what it's talking about right here, using only integer coefficients. The coefficients are the a's, b's, and c's in my standard form right here. So an integer is basically a number that's not a fraction. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, dot, 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 forever. Okay? It can be a negative. Uh, an integer can be a negative number, but it's not a fraction or a decimal number. So my a's, b's, and c's need to be nice numbers without fractions, and my a specifically has to be a positive number. All right, so let's look back here where we left off. y minus 7 equals negative 2 thirds x plus 4 thirds. We need to manipulate this equation right here and put it in standard form. If they would have asked for it in slope-intercept form, which is this guy right here, slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, all we'd have to do is add the 7 over and we'd be done. And that's a lot of times uh, how you're going to write your answer in slope-intercept form. It just happens that this one asked for standard form. Um, actually, just for fun, let's put it in slope-intercept form real quick so we can check our intercept. If I add 7 over, I get y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 4 thirds is 1 and 1 third, plus 7 makes 8 and 1 third. So that makes our y-intercept 8 and 1 third, which matches which are with our graph right here. Okay, so that's, that's good. All right, I'm going to erase, let's see, let's erase this stuff so we have a place to work on our our standard form here okay and I'm gonna rewrite this equation that we have our slope intercept form of our equation I'll write it up here y equals negative two thirds x plus eight and one third that's our slope intercept form and it's 
verified with our graph. I'm, I'm really confident that that's correct. Now all I have to do is put it in standard form because that's what the question asked for. Okay, so to put it in standard form, I need to have my x term and my y term both over on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and add the x term, um, which is 2 thirds x, negative 2 thirds x. I'm going to add 2 thirds x to both sides, which basically moves that term to the right side of the equation. So now I have, or excuse me, left. I'm going to know my left and my right, huh? I got to move it to the left side of the equation. Sorry about that. I always had trouble with left and right. North, south, east, and west always stayed where it was supposed to be. But if I turned around, left and right changed. When I was a little kid, that used to make me crazy. Obviously, it's followed me into adulthood a little bit. All right, so now we have 2 thirds x plus y equals 8 and 1 third. We're doing great. We, we're, we have pretty close to the standard form. We've got an ax plus a by equals a c. That looks good. Our only thing now is we have to have integers, so we need to get rid of these fractions. I'm going to erase this 8 and 1 third right here, and I'm going to write that as an improper fraction. So we can get rid of uh, the fraction, the fractions altogether by multiplying by something. All right, 8 times 3 is 24, plus 1 is 25, so that gives us 25 thirds. So now I want to clear the fractions in this equation. I'm going to do that by multiplying the whole equation by the least common denominator, which is 3. So I'm going to multiply this by 3. I have to multiply the y by 3 as well, even though it doesn't have a fraction. And I multiply the other side by 3. You're multiplying every term by 3, which is the same as multiplying both sides of the equation by 3, which is legal because what you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other. That's completely legal. And the reason we're doing this is so we can, boom, cancel that, boom, cancel that. That gets rid of our fractions. And now we have 2x plus 3y. We still have to multiply the y by 3. That didn't cancel because there was no fraction there. Equals 25. And that looks like great standard form right there. Let's check it out. Our a value is 2. Our b value is 3. Our c value is 25. Our a value is positive. If that was a negative, then we'd have to multiply both sides by a negative 1, and that would get rid of the negative. Uh, but otherwise, I think we're looking good right there. So there's our equation. Um, the thing about standard form, it, it kind of looks nice. There's no fractions. It looks like it's all in order. It doesn't tell you the slope and y-intercept, which are two characteristics of a line which are nice to know. And for that reason, you don't see it as often as maybe slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form gives you a lot of information about your line uh, right away. Here's our slope-intercept form. So these two equations are equivalent. These are the same equations, just manipulated to look different by doing stuff to both sides and rearranging things. But if you put 2 in for x and 7 in for y into either of these equations, you, it would make it true. Um, if I put 2 in here for this x and a 7 in for this y, I'd have 4 plus 21, which is 25. If I put negative 1 in for x and 9 in for y, because those are my points, negative 1, 9, I'd get uh, negative 2 plus 27, uh, that equals 25. So those points make that equation true. The same thing uh, is true for the slope-intercept form of the line. If I put these values of x and y into my slope-intercept form, it makes the equation true as well. So these are just two different forms of the same line, slope-intercept form and standard form. Well, I hope that helped, and um, have fun writing equations of lines.